Hey guys, make sure you send me what you're buying on Amazon uh, through jmore.com. Go to jmore.com, click the Amazon link. Jay Moores, I'm a big fan of Opie and Anthony and Ron and Fez. Love when you're on, especially the Paul Risen's Day instant classic. Oh, it was. I went through your Amazon link and bought some crap from my kids. I hope it worked. Here's a rundown. Katarina toddler costume for my daughter. Yeah, sure, dude. This is from John Alkire Jr. Fisher Price Little People Disney Princess Songs Palace for my daughter. First of all, right away, I got to be in this house. This is like the coolest stuff I've ever heard. This is money, dude. If I had this laying around the house, I wouldn't be running on the beach. I would just I would never would have quit smoking pot. I just would have been crushing reefer. A Fisher Price Little People Disney Princesses Songs Palace. Skylanders Spyro's Adventure Trigger Happy Gremlin Gunslinger costume small parentheses small for my boy. All right. Walida Calendula diaper care, 2.8 ounce from my baby boy. What does this guy live in a shoe? Hey, he's got so many kids he lives in a shoe, right? Skylander Spyro's Adventure Pack, Empire of Ice for my boy. Skylander Spyro's Adventure Triple Character Pack, Prison Break, Boomer Voodoo for my boy. Skylander's Spyro's Adventure Pack, Pirate Seas. For my boy. And then he writes, this is very nice from John Alkire Jr. We just had another baby boy in July and named him John Jacob the Third. I had to call him JJ after hearing your podcast and you always telling stories and people calling you JJ. Have a good one. Get a hold of me if you ever come to West Virginia and need some company. That's from John Alkire. Let me tell you something. I don't foresee myself going to West Virginia. I don't know if there's a Spudgy's Chuckle Hut or... You know, uh, you know, mountaineer comedy connection. But I will say this: if I'm ever in West Virginia, I'm hitting up that little people Disney Princess Songs Palace and the Gremlin Gunslinger costume. I might f- big guy in a little Gremlin Gunslinger costume. So thank you, John Alkire. Check this out, y'all, from Ziggy Reese. So, I bought a leather passport cover with gold initials, no less, for my friend Danilo. See, I was in charge of watching the bags at the train station in Barcelona while the boys went to find us accommodation. And I may or may not have dozed off. (laughs) After a week in Ibiza and Danilo's bag, including passport, were borrowed by some a-hole thief. Fast forward 10 years to our best friend's wedding, and while I got to bring the best man something, hopefully not won't get borrowed again. Ziggy Reese. P.S. I know my name is Ziggy, but I am a girl. A five foot nine girl, like anyone guesses when they think of the name Ziggy. Dot, dot, dot. Boom. Yes. Oh, this episode, I should probably read an ad before we get to Artie Quitter, you big quitter. At Artie Quitter. Yes. Don't forget to uh, hit him up. You're quite the get. I mean, uh, you're kind of hot stuff, mister. <laughs> Artie freaking Lang. Somehow we've never met, which seems impossible. It is, man. A lot of mutual friends. But there was a complete, maybe just from being comics, there's that complete... Right when we saw each other, familiarity. Oh, definitely. There yeah. was no getting, is the water okay? Like we just <laughs> hugged and made like Raging Bull jokes. Yeah. No, no, I've always related to everything you've done. I always say, I always liked your stand up and everything. I love your yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, my wife loves your stuff and apparently loves I your stuff. I worked co-stars. with your wife for a year, yeah, on a sitcom called the, well, it was called Norm. First, oh, the Norm oh show, then gosh. Norm about Norm McDonald. <laughs> hey, what are the odds, you know? <laughs> It would be great if I was on that show, Judge Judy, you know? <laughs> but I'm not Judy at all. And that's the irony, is that if my name's Norm, you know? And then you get that judge lady. I, I don't even know if she's a real judge, you know? And they're like, yeah, hey, everybody looks the Norm show. And then that Judge Judy lady comes out. And the audience is all confused, you know? That's perfect. I don't know. Yeah. That's what the H? My favorite thing, when Dirty Work came out, the movie me and Norm did, this is my favorite Norm story. He, uh, uh, one of the review, the review in the Star Ledger said that Artie Lang has all the charm of a date rapist. Jesus. Uh, well, you know, I swear, yeah. You know, I mean, pretty accurate. And uh, Norm said to me, uh, Norm said to me, hey, man, that's fucking great. He goes, a date rapist has to have way more charm than a regular rapist. You should be happy about it. Yeah, Robert Chambers, you know. <laughs> 
Like, you, 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 you know, guys got to play like the cross or something. You can't be like, that guy in the woods, ah, ah, I'm going to rape you. you know, that's just like, that's just. Uh, See, that's rape. a perfect norm. There's that's an just extra, uh, rape. There's an, there's an that's extra, rape at all. You know, there's there's no an extra one. nuance to that norm. Well, probably, yeah, I've been working on it a while there. <laughs> you know that walking, you get tired of playing Hotel California. You want to you close with dirty laundry. <laughs> Uh, this episode of More Stories is brought to you by uh, Stamps.com. There's no doubt about it. Small business operations have improved over the years because of technology. That includes mailing and shipping, thanks to Stamps.com, you know. <laughs> uh, hey, with Stamps.com, buy and print official U.S. postage. I'm going to save that for later. Uh, using your own computer and printer uh, whenever you need it, 24-7. No more wasting time at the post office. That's a hassle. Here you go, honey. Thank you. Uh, look. Don't do it. Don't lease. Don't do it. For crying out loud. What the hell is Artie thinking? It's a goddamn shooting gallery. Artie's going to be okay. You stamp.com. Don't get a postage meter. Stamps.com offers features, uh, you know, than, than a, more features than a meter and at a fraction of the price. Plus, Stamps.com customers receive special discounts on mailing and shipping. You can't even get it at the post office on priority mail, express mail, and more. It's no wonder Stamps.com customers have already printed over $3 billion in postage. I use Stamps.com. You should, too. Use my last name, more M-O-H-R, for my special offer, no-risk trial, $110 bonus offer. That includes a digital scale. Which, at another time, Artie and I would be using for something completely different. <laughs> and up to $55 free exactly. postage. Uh, don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage. Type in more MOHR. That's stamps.com. Enter more MOHR. Otto and George tweeted oh, we've, yeah. had a, we've had a weird run. Mm -hmm. It's weird that Damian Eccles of the West Memphis Three is in the same room as like Andy Cohen from Bravo <laughs> and Mick Foley. <laughs> And I said, my, my doorman must think uh, we're casting uh, like a John Waters movie. <laughs> and Otto and George, this is Damien Eccles. Damien Eccles, this is Otto and George. Artie Lang, That's Artie great. Lang, this is Bravo Andy. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Otto and George wrote, six years ago, that would have been an, a real different party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell Artie the blood in his shoes are ruining the carpet in the hotel. <laughs> That was what Otto told me to tell you yeah. via tweet. <laughs> uh, maybe George sent it in all fairness. Right, uh, probably. A cock. <laughs> Artie has a new book coming out, uh, Crash and Burn. It's called Crash and Burn. And the forward, this is a coup. Yes. First of all, me having you on the podcast, you're a big, uh, you're a big get, man. <laughs> you're a big deal. Well, I have Love to tell by you, all. I have to tell you, Jay, the, the, uh, when I was figuring out what to do post rehab, people said, oh, maybe you could do a podcast. And he goes, is anybody really successful at it? You're, you're one of three names people point to. They go, mm. well, there's Jay Moore, uh, Adam Carolla, and Mark Maron. And then yeah. after that, they have nobody. <laughs> like, yeah. Those are the three most successful podcasts. Like you're just selling porn in between guests. Well, well, that's what I mean. Well, yeah. And they, they go, well, those are people that make money at it so uh, uh i was happy to hear you'd have me in here man i've been wanting to do it that's great yeah i appreciate that my man and you're making that uh nick and Artie money oh, over yeah. on the audience <laughs> network because if anybody knows <laughs> it's like nbc when the going was hot when they had like cheers and uh <laughs> right. cosby show that's how audience tv gives out the well, money direct tv is is um they're like a billion dollar company from that sunday ticket just okay. every game. I just love that oh, my I never my thought of that. my yeah my my Fuck career is being financed by uh, by you illegal have... gambling money now. I, was just gonna say, you <laughs> know, I mean, like, who needs every game? You know, that's you going direct... against the Eagles every Sunday, <laughs> right? They, right. They point to fantasy football. They go, well, fantasy, but, but but then that's maybe ten percent, ninety percent of it are bookies or, or guys gambling. I mean, every fucking game, you know. And they, I mean, they have so much money from it, so um, they're no, taken care of. Nothing's better than the college package because you're watching like. Uh, Buffalo versus Howard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's on a Wednesday before the Saturday, and it's up in Buffalo. Jim Rome once had the best point. He's always yeah. said for years uh, that those he's those grease balls in Vegas have like the all time <laughs> fixes in. You can't win. Like if you don't think it's rigged. Oh my god! Like it's the two green dots on the roulette table that you go. Oh no! Right. Everything is gone. No, I don't know. And one year it was it was Buffalo. Versus Temple, was, yeah. and that's when Temple bef before Al Golden and the guy before they got respectable, right? Not so good this year. Yeah, and uh, it was the first game of the season, and like I said, it was like a Tuesday in Buffalo, like in July before the actual season. Yeah, and the spread was three and a half. 
Okay. I think I have this right. I may go back and fix it. <laughs> I love the halves. Whenever a half is in volume. Uh, uh, oh, no. The spread was six. Mm-hmm. I want to get this right. Okay. okay. I have it now. All I got right. it all end up. Spread was seven. Okay. All right. We're tied 6-6. Six, six. It goes into <laughs> overtime. Yeah. Opening kickoff goes for a touchdown. No extra point. All right. They uh, just run out into the, the night. Worst, yeah. Everybody gets paid. That's the worst. Exactly, And Jim Rome man. said, to his credit, if you don't think those grease balls in Vegas know what's <laughs> happening, why not kick the extra point? Uh, no, Vegas is – exactly what Vegas is one of those things. It's like winning a bunch of money – uh, or losing a bunch of money to some guy who buys a diamond ring with it, and every time you see him, he just shows you the fucking ring. Every time you go to Vegas, like they we, they built the Brooklyn Bridge and the Eiffel Tower with your money, and you keep going. And I just, you know, but I, I but you, you still know, gamble because you like it. I, I I don't I don't I can't do anything anymore because even that's a trigger. Like if I put a five dollar bet down on roulette tonight, by tomorrow at noon I'd be running guns to Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> it just leads to like you know bad shit. I I so I I don't um so what I don't have you partake in anything it anymore. Uh, meetings? Just I'd love meetings? to say exercise. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, I mean I I go to you, meetings and stuff. I try to go to four of those a week. You exercise? I, you just do like sets of one. <laughs> You're powerless. You just bench in two twenty once. I, I, I lifted Boom! weights. I lifted weights once in my life when I was like fifteen because they taught me to be. <laughs> and and I and I put them down after I did it. And I say, why would I ever do that again? <laughs> Why would I ever pick that up and do that again? Because it's all about repetition, and I'm like, I, I get bored. And I got it. Yeah, I thought I, I had like, it. I like to tell jokes and get high. What, yeah, what's this know, heavy what am stuff? I doing fucking curls for? You know, I, 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 the boredom is the hardest thing, man. Because gambling, gambling's instant excitement. You know, if it's a Tuesday night in February and and there's nothing's going on, just bet Virginia Tech over whoever the fuck they're playing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, bet more money than you can afford to lose, and it's like. New Year's Eve at P. Diddy's house. I mean, this looks very exciting. I always bet on the team with the players. I look at the rosters, whoever has the most apostrophes. <laughs> That's right, what shit like that. Or bet on stuff like the Mirage Sportsbook. I can remember sitting there with like an eight ball in my pocket and like just getting <laughs> just getting whiskey from these hot chicks or wagers. And I got bets on everything, like high school lacrosse games. You, you could bet on two kids <laughs> playing wiffle ball in Milwaukee. <laughs> like there's just every fucking thing's up there. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Well, yeah, you can bet on anything, and you just get the shakes of like I'm having so much fun. This is fun, and, you know. And you lost a lot. You lost more than you won. I did, without question. Yeah, I figured out. I figured out uh, as best I could um, in rehab because they made me do this. I, I I'm down about nine hundred thirty thousand. If I and that's everything I can remember: big bets, boxing matches, coin tosses before Super Bowl. <laughs> like, oh, that's that's tough money. It's only beat. Well, that's it. Uh, you're down twenty five hundred before the kickoff. <laughs> That's mania. <laughs> then you're calling in your proposition bets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would take stuff at the half. Drone Bettis is going to scratch his ass. It's a lock. <laughs> all those prop bets. Kytel is talking you into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Daryl Strawberry. He looked me in my eyes. <laughs> He's saving it for the big one. <laughs> well, it's Cardi. I bet overs on all that shit because they go uh, overs on field goals are only uh, one and a half for the first half. They got to go over that, right? And, and, and then, no, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's like, you know. So you go to rehab. So, I mean, do you talk about why you went to rehab? Sure, yeah. Because when they I'm say that you were book. stabbing yourself, <laughs> that's usually not the junkie way. No, what, hap- what happened was I had run out of opiates. And I was like, um, I honestly, people don't believe this. I honestly did not have in my head I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to lose enough blood to where I, and I'm not defending this opinion either. No, it's a great but addict. I, I, I wanted it's a to, peek inside an addict's mind. It's I, great. I wanted to get already, that feeling. I already know what you're going to say. No, I, I wanted to get that feeling of like, oh, the wooziness. I loved, oh. I was in perpetual, from being on the road so much, perpetual uh, yearning for an eight hours night sleep. That's all I wanted. That's all I want. And when I ran out of shit and, and I had nothing else, I thought if I lose enough blood... I could get that feeling and I'll fall asleep. And now, granted, I didn't mind what happened after that. I wasn't thinking I had, like, well, I don't know what I was going to do when you I woke up. You saved yourself in, like, the torso and yeah, trunk. Yeah, and with my gut, it was like, you know, I, I wanted to name my second book Too Fat to Die because I actually, that, if I had abs, I'd be dead right now. <laughs> the problem with that title is the minute the book comes out, you die. Yeah, right. And I was it's like, oh, put... so sad. He even knew, he called his shot. It's throwing a jinx out of it that I don't need, quite frankly. No. <laughs> Yeah, right. No, no. <laughs> That's good. Betting on Believe me, when I turned 40, so much money changed hands on the internet. You, you, could, you could look this up. There's an episode of CSI. The second or third year I was on Stern, 
uh, some writer, I guess, was a fan of the show. And on CSI Miami, they bust a um, a death pool ring where, like, you're betting on celebrities and when they would die, who's going to die first. So literally, and David Caruso says it in that overdramatic thing. He's like, they're betting on human lives. This is a celebrity death pool. And here were the other names. They were uh, Don Ho. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was Don Ho, Henry Kissinger, Artie Lang. <laughs> That's on an episode of CSI Miami. That's inc- <laughs> <laughs> and I think I outlive both. Like I the, think Don Ho's dead, so I think I Yeah, no, he died. That's yeah, the best episode die. of Love Boat ever. <laughs> Artie Lang, Don Ho, Henry Kissinger. <laughs> <laughs> Fan- Fantasy Island. <laughs> Truly, you are so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so th- literally, so that was, you know. Uh, I thought you were uh, going to say you stabbed yourself. So you go to the hospital and get prescribed opiates. Well, that's what happened yourself. afterwards. I was getting morphine. I went to Jersey City's medical center, and I was getting morphine once every two hours. And I was never more prompt in my life to nurse <laughs> exactly two hours on a button. Moving it was, uh, you know, so I, I, I uh, it's, How, it's all embarrassing behavior, but I was a fuck. I'm a full-blown heroin addict, man. I, well, as addicts, you got it. We have to be. I'm in recovery. Yeah. And you have to be. It just, there's something so liberating about just going, yeah, I just. I went to the dentist. He prescribed me Vicodin. Right. I took one, and then I counted how many were left <laughs> to make sure he didn't fuck me. Yeah, oh yeah. Like there better yeah. be twenty nine left, or I'm going back. <laughs> no, you when you were on Howard, the and they would thing. say like, "Wow, Artie sounds really messed up today." <laughs> were you, you were messed up? Yes, a lot of the times I was. I, 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 um, I used to get. I was doing crazy shit, such self destructive shit, begging myself. To, I was getting. Uh, uh, dope delivered to the studio, like the doorman downstairs in Sirius would have a package for me. And I mean, the most retarded cop could have figured it out at some level. Uh, one day the DEA came to the sh- I jokingly said after Heath Ledger died, uh, someone sa- said, uh, I said, I have a lot in common with Heath Ledger. We both had the same heroin dealer, Mary Kate Olsen, <laughs> heroin dealer. And, uh, and Robin said, no, I said, no, I, I had the same heroin dealer as Heath Ledger. Totally as a joke. And uh, the next day, the DEA showed up because they thought it might be true. They pulled me in the back. Now, this is like you're at work. And the two DEA agents take me in the back and they go, listen, we're investigating the Heath Ledger death. Were you kidding? And I'm like, yeah, I was. And thank God they believed that and they didn't investigate me. So, uh, because I had heroin on me while I was talking to the DEA. (laughs) You want to talk about sweating? I was like, I mean, all I had to do was just briefly frisk me and I'd be getting out of jail today. Oh, so you were cavalier about it. Like, it was oh, in your pocket. Uh, it wasn't like in a heroin balloon in your ass. No. <laughs> You're wearing it around your neck. No, it's funny. We went like, that... Like candy necklaces? <laughs> your little balloons going all the way around your neck. We went to Afghanistan, <laughs> to, do, we went to, Afghanistan nice. to do stand-up, but I remember being on stage doing an outdoor, an outdoor gig in, like, uh, in Kandahar and thinking to myself, God, right over that mountain is fresh heroin. It'd be great to do some heroin that a, a woman didn't shit out at gunpoint in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> You hate to do that fresh heroin. <laughs> so, but that's what happens with it. Uh, it, it. It slowly just takes over all of your your entire day. Is thinking uh, more so than booze. Any other thing I've been addicted to, you're like romantic about it. You know, like I'm gonna go get it and I'm gonna pick it up. It's like going. You smoke it, it or shoot it. I I snorted it. I was getting shit you that was. You uh, never shot it. Never. Never tried uh, it. Well, I told the story of my first book. I was I was dating this stripper from outside of Wilmington, Delaware, and it was, she was a she was she was a dealer, and um, I fell asleep on her couch in her apartment one day, and I woke up and I saw her like getting a needle ready because I think she shot it, and she just like she took the needle and I it was almost like I was watching a dream and she skim popped me she just fucking put the thing right in the side of my arm. And I was like, "What are you doing?" And then it hit me, and I was like, "Tetanus." Twelve hours. I was like, "Oh my god!" But uh, I and never. That was just a skin pop shot. Yeah, yeah. I, but I'm not a guy who likes preparations. So I, I wasn't yeah. about to go get the needles and everything. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that one time. That's just why you to, never like lifting weights. You have, to, just, you have to rack all the weights and prepare them. Yeah, I'm not a pre- preparation guy. Whatever's on the bar, I'll lift it. <laughs> I like winging it. Yeah, I'll I go love to the this gym. atmosphere. Right now. Yeah. That's, that's what makes this podcast the best. It's, I told you. It's this like, is actually it's, fantastic. It's like you don't have to dress. You'd be in your goddamn pajamas. We're at the same regions, and you're like, uh, we could be under a bridge in Pittsburgh right yeah, now. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> Allegheny River going right by. Uh, so your new book is going to be called Crash and Burn. Right, and Joe Buck wrote the foreword. All right. Now, for the listeners that might not know this, but if you're listening to this, I'm assuming because you're a huge fan of Artie's, 
Uh, by the way, Nick and Artie on DirecTV, that's on the Audience Network. I yeah. like it. And it's well done. I, I really like how they shoot the interstitials. Like during the commercial breaks, they'll yeah, just go hot for like 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. really feel, wow, this is like an important place. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, you got it. Well, hopefully, you'll be able to come down in the next week or so or something. I, I'll, we'll just they do took, it. Yeah. They took care of us, man. We're, we're in the heart of Soho, and they, it's like a 7,000 square foot loft with a, you know, a, a pool table, a full kitchen, a pitching machine. It's fucking, it's, they built us a playground. You Like a batting cage? Well, it's one of those things. They have bats that you could hit, but that you throw and it shows you how fast you're throwing, oh, like at yeah, the boardwalk, yeah. that type of thing. It's always uh, a lower number than you think. Yeah, no, right, no. I found out that something's wrong with it because 48's the highest I've got. I'm like, come on, you got to be kidding me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it's like a little it's paradise. It's like the Bravo clubhouse, but straight. Right, it's it's straight. It's straight Bravo. It's the straightest <laughs> room in Manhattan. It pretty much is, yeah. Like, Scores is gay. Well, yeah, it's the other side of the spectrum. It's actually gay. It's actually a gay bashing place. Oh. <laughs> That's yeah. what it's become. That's what the pool cues are for. <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't want to. In case you want to film a, a scene from Mean Streets with a goddamn tiger in the corner <laughs> and Nick DiPaolo complaining about Mitch Hedberg as his neighbor. <laughs> Go around. Did you ever hear that story? With that? You to tell it again. The, the, the way the way Nick found out that bit was uh-huh. about him. Uh, What's had, the bit though? Well, the bit is he just called it his next door neighbor. DePaulo moves to L.A. and wherever this is, early nineties, and the 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 manager of the complex he's in the apartment complex says, "Oh, your 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 next door neighbor's a comic too." And Norm saw, I mean, uh, Nick saw him with a guitar, and so Nick figures, "Oh, he's some hack guitar act," and I don't. So uh, they talk a couple of times, and Hedberg, I guess, will get fucked up and play guitar at like four in the morning. And Nick, who's like an eighty-year-old guy, would just be like, "Calm down, shut up, that!" And you know, just keep knocking on the wall till <laughs> till Hedberg would stop playing the guitar. He did it like every night. So uh, Hedberg's on Letterman, and he does a bit complaining about his LA neighbor, and uh, it's really funny about like uh, my neighbor's knocking on the do- knocking on the wall. I can't open the wall. You got to come around to the door. Whatever the bit go was, go around. You got to go around. Right, got to go around. Got to go around. You know, right? So uh, I cannot open a wall. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So the, this this is how Nick finds out that was about him. <laughs> he, he goes to do uh, he goes to do Letterman the next uh, next week. And uh, Nick does. The, yeah, the okay. segment producer says, "Oh yeah, Mitch Hedberg. Mitch Hedberg was here. It was kind of cool. He left his notes about the set he was going to do, and uh, and we we'll start doing a thing. But if you want to give us your handwritten notes, you want to keep them and stuff. So Nick saw Hedberg's notes, and it said uh, when it got to that bit, it just said DePaulo. <laughs> that was his bullet points. His it just said DePaulo. That's all. Oh it's my god." <laughs> And Nick figured out it was about him. It's like Club Sandwich, 13th floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. DePaulo. Yeah. DePaulo, that's all it's at. <laughs> the 13th floor is really the 14th floor, or whatever it's called, if it is. Jump out the window, you will die sooner. Uh, uh, yeah, Nick is an 80-year-old man, but yeah, he must be yeah. fun to talk sports with because he's a chowd. Uh, yeah, no, he, well, he's listen, a we, have a, built, we have a built-in rivalry. It's like, I mean, first of all, he's a Patriots fan. I'm a, I'm a Giants fan. They sent us to that Super Bowl last year. <laughs> Uh, so so uh, it's like we're in the third row, and he wanted to kill somebody because I was busting his balls. Direct I mean, TV sent you? Uh, yeah, Direct TV sent right, us. Ani, we're going to have to make a call to Direct TV tonight. Dude, the, the, for, the, that's, the, that's a perk. More stories because on Direct TV. Because we're going to fucking nine. Uh, listen, they're hiring, man. Stay tuned after Nick and Artie <laughs> for more stories. I think it fits perfect. And they can cuss. <laughs> on Direct TV, yeah. Uh, we're on regular radio in some places, so we can't even do that. But, Sirius um, XM Channel 94? Channel 94. Channel 94. Or 92. One of those. One of those. Difference? If you cruise the 90s. Look, Google search Nick and Artie. Yeah. Leave us alone. <laughs> Pretty so much. We go to the Super Bowl with DePaulo. We go to the Super Bowl, and he's a big Patriot fan. I've been busting his chops the whole time, and then they, the Patriots lose the way they did, and he was seething. The next morning, we had a flight. The only flight they could get us back on was through Charlotte, so we weren't going to get home for like eight Eight hours. So he goes, well, I'll meet you down here at 7 a.m. to get the cab. The meantime, I go down and I'm like mingling because I was happy. I'm mingling with other Giant fans. I saw a guy from Sirius and he goes, how do you get home tomorrow? And he's the head of promotion at Sirius, my friend Ross. He goes, I go, I got a flight. Thank God. The only flight they can get us is through Charlotte. He goes, we'll pick you up at 7 in the morning. My buddy's got a private jet. The guys from Maxim Magazine have a private jet and they got one extra seat. He called the guy. The guy said, yeah, tell him he can come. So I'm, I say, I'm not going to tell Nick. So I meet him down as if we're both getting in the cab. to the. <laughs> so we get down there at 7 a.m. He's still pissed off about the Patriots. And <laughs> as the cab's pulling up, a, a big limo pulls up with two Maxim girls in it. 
and 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 the, my friend Ross. And instead of getting in the cab, I go, "Oh, Nick, by the way, I'm taking the Maxim jet home. Fuck the Patriot." <laughs> I got in the car. He was. <laughs> he called me from Charlotte. He turned 81. He called, he called me from Charlotte on his layover, a three-hour layover. <laughs> I was in my bed in Hoboken watching Sports Center by 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> I was on a private jet with two Max. <laughs> Sometimes it just works out. He is very angry. To the delight of all of us. <laughs> oh, my God. He's Let funny, me tell you man. the best Nick DiPaolo thing that ever happened in yeah. my lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, he was at the Improv. It was an HBO showcase. <laughs> And the place is packed, the Melrose Improv. Right. And uh, everyone's lives are on the line. You know this. You go up sure. and you're like, if I could just kill, I get a show on HBO. Yeah. And uh, the comic right before DePaulo was the guy with the uh, <laughs> MS, Chris Fonseca. <laughs> so it takes him like, they're like, Chris Fonseca. Oh, my God. And it takes him like 18 minutes to get to the stage. Yeah. Like, like audience members are carrying him <laughs> like Owen Meany up to the stage, oh, except he weighs man. 240 pounds. <laughs> And he gets up there, and the guy's just a mess. You know, like, I mean, it's a mess. It, I, is it MS? Did, I think he has MS. So yeah. it's like like Jerry from Facts of Life had it. But, but she was super high-functioning. She was on one end of the spectrum. Right. And this guy's wearing a suit. And, and he's I'm not, doing stand-up. Yes, and I'm not saying this for comedic effect. He's right. literally, like, slobbering all over himself. Right, yeah, yeah, I've seen him. And he's like, people ask me, how long have you been uh, retarded? And I ask them, how long have you been an asshole? <laughs> it did sound like Seinfeld. <laughs> and that's Seinfeld. An observational guy. People ask me, how long have you been retarded? <laughs> What's the deal with Down syndrome talks? There's always. <laughs> Let's do karaoke. I'll sing tequila. That's great. Just stand with MS. That's perfect. <laughs> I'll stand in place and just yell tequila when it's my turn. Here's an edgy character. <laughs> Seinfeld so, with MS. <laughs> What's the deal? Why are there new tennis balls on my walk? <laughs> Why am I eating my own shit? <laughs> I, like how, I like how in your mind the mental capacity of somebody with MS is that. Like, Listen, I've been in psych wards. I've seen it. You're right. Actually, you know what? Who am I to question you? <laughs> right. I take it back. <laughs> Withdrawn, Mr. Lang. <laughs> None for you, Mr. Hitler. <laughs> So uh, Chris Fonseca goes up and he's like, just, and I mean this as a literal example, save your fucking tweets. The yeah. guy's literally slobbering yeah. and he's like, it's so, it's oh, br man. brutally uncomfortable. And people are like, oh my God, it's a miracle he's up there, like laughing like that. <laughs> and the very next comic, his, name. his whole career just went out. The moment they said Chris Fonseca, <laughs> Nick DiPaolo no longer existed. It was like Guns N' Roses following Metallica. <laughs> Like, there's no, it's not, you're not going to do it. Right. So Nick goes up and never to, um, never to go down. He, ne the he bat, goes down swinging. The bat never stays uh, on his shoulder. You're right. He's, no. He doesn't Carlos Beltran that shit. That's why he's a he comic. Comic. That. Yeah, he no, swings no, no. so hard. <laughs> he will go he down. Walk, he walks on stage and they're still applauding. He goes, what's with McDonald's hand, hiring the handicap? <laughs> that was his opening bit. And the place... Icicles formed on the walls. Oh, man. And he goes, hey, uh, the guy wearing the deep fryer is wearing a hockey helmet. And I'm like, hey, Gretzky, where's my apple pie? <laughs> and the girl Gretzky. comes over, is there a problem? I go, yeah, it's regarding Henry over there. <laughs> the crowd is silent. Oh, Me and a friend God. of mine are screaming, laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's only one other person in the room yelling, and he's at our table. And we're like... We don't remember bringing a third guy with us. All right. Elvis Costello. You're kidding me. Gone. Like, That's hilarious. Like banging the table, and the three of us are like, ah. I wonder if Nick knows that. I got to tell him that. That's fucking hilarious. I don't think hilarious. he does. But tell, tell him Elvis Costello, when he did Storytellers, Love that. track two was DePaulo. <laughs> Oliver's army is really DePaulo's army. <laughs> Shine all the buttons on your green shirt, Nick DePaulo. Nick <laughs> It's about. It's called the Paul. Allison, yeah, Allison was originally called. Well, Did you ever hear uh, Nick's story with Patrice? Patrice O'Neill had gotten a, a physical, and he came. Uh, I think he was at the cellar, like at the table. <laughs> so, so, and he was late for something, and 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 and, and Patrice sits down, and, and Nick goes, like, even, even when Nick is asking something that's kind of like caring, it sounds like a dagger. He goes, "How was your physical?" And uh, and Patrice goes, Patrice goes, man, I got seven out of ten things that kill niggas. <laughs> and like this, this fast, Nick goes, one of them a handgun. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's always worked against me. Yeah, <laughs> we've talked about it on the podcast a lot. Is like that's 
the environment that I was incubated in. Right. So when you go to meet other, like, when you're around, like, actors. Oh, forget it. And, or, like, they L.A. Used comics. Su- they used to fake support. Like, like yeah. you know. Right? And then you're in an alternative room going, look at these assholes. No, They're like, know. whoa. And they don't realize you're with Nick. You're dropping, you know, and Yeah, but then you become, right. Like, uh, like that, that table at the comedy cellar. That, that's a no-holds-barred fucking crazy madhouse. The crowd outfit. was that good. Well, exactly. So, you know, it's. And right, and and I, you find actors in L.A. agents, it, it, they're more evil, but in a way more covert way. But the, there's such fake support to their face, and then if you dare say something that's honest or whatever, you're the asshole. Yeah. You know that affects your career. But um, <laughs> one quick Norm thing, as you just said that about, uh, we're we're playing. I'm opening for Norm, and we're in San Francisco, and he goes, "Hey man, we're in fucking San Francisco. No fag shit." And I go, what? He goes, just don't fucking ruin my career. Don't do any fag shit. We're in San Francisco. I'm like, well, I played the punchline for you. We're at a fucking theater, man. There's critics out there. Don't fuck with me. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so I uh, I go up and I struggle through 20 minutes without gay stuff. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and Norm comes up first thing out of his mouth before good to be here. He goes, hey, how about that AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> He goes, you know, everybody's saying bad stuff about AIDS all the time, but I read in an article, AIDS doesn't discriminate. And that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. That's his first joke. That's why he didn't want to do it. And he killed. He got, like, the critics that were there actually got it a little bit, I think, you know, and he murdered, but. I'm going to jump in. I agree with you already. uh, I think you, did you play Norm's brother? I played his stepbrother. Okay. Yeah, right. All right. I had the fat mom. That was that, the problem. Right. That was, that, was, that was the ongoing through line. The yeah. beautiful, the beautiful yeah. blue eyes. Right, right. He just yeah, said, hey. Yeah, yeah, he was, was, he both, said, you're mad because you got the fat mom. You both have twinkly blue eyes. At any rate. Uh, <laughs> you do have you, nice you, blue you, eyes, you, Yeah, beautiful. And you uh, had to call your father, your, your fake dad on yeah. his fake birthday. And right, the right. scene called for you guys to like both pick up a phone at once and say, Hey, Dad, happy birthday. Oh, that's and right. the audience is there. That's and, right. And it was like, you know, okay, and action. You both pick up the phone. You both say, in unison, hey, Dad, and out of your mouth comes the correct line, happy <laughs> birthday. And Norm says, Merry Christmas. <laughs> right. And in, without hesitation, you looked right at the audience and you said, what? Our dad's Jesus. <laughs> and I was, I was actually pissed a little yeah. I was I, from the I, moment we met I, she fast, told me that's the single greatest ad lib she's ever seen in quickest, the quickest studio you audience I've yeah, ever they took, seen they, they, that's in all the blooper shows I still get checks for that they they put that in blooper shows yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not oh, with shit. Dick Clark and Ed McMahon. <laughs> Them now. Laying in their well, caskets. Well, thank you for remembering that. Uh, it was truly one of the quickest, quickest, yeah. quickest things I've ever seen. That was the seen. best ad She told me for, when we met. Oh, the, yeah? The, the, <laughs> let me tell you the best <laughs> ad lib I ever saw. After I finished telling you how madly in love I was with Norm. Well, Norm used years. to do... Yeah, Norm. she was in love with Norm. She had the hots for Norm. Oh, yeah. Well, I, thank I, God I, you didn't was, go down that I road. Was, I was crazy. <laughs> the hots for me? How? No, I just thought he was the... Bees knees. I was I was crazy about it. Now that's some fag shit. <laughs> at so bees I would, knees. I, I, well, I, I, then I'll then I'll be some fag shit. And so I'd, like I would go to work every day like shaky and nervous. And really? Sweat. Oh yeah, like knees knocking. Oh my god, she's in love with me. Already. <laughs> it, was, it was so embarrassing. At any rate, uh, you single handedly had the. But you had to have known that she was in love with Norm. If you no, were. I couldn't. I, I mean, I just I, I. It was so funny. Like like you were so young and you always had that bodyguard with you. And I I felt bad for you because I mean I'm I said. Oh my God, she's probably got these crazy stalkers. Every five, and uh, so we we wanted to be very appropriate around you. So We're always far too no, appropriate. Yeah, she likes some good grab ass. Like, no, I, yeah. listen, no, I, but, but I, you know, I actually said, uh, bigger than you. Like, I'm, but no, because I I feel I actually feel bad for you with the bodyguard. Now, that's got to be a hard life when you're that age. So I would we'd always have to be all right. Everything okay? You don't want to say anything fucking through nuts, but. Hey, uh, look, Artie. <laughs> Mickey Cox is coming with that giant black bodyguard, you know? So, uh, <laughs> hey, no, no, that bodyguard shit. <laughs> right. When no, there's no, a no, big no. black bodyguard. When there's a big black bodyguard, you know? <laughs> I don't hear any of that bodyguard shit you do uh, all the shit. time. Like, hey, my God. Hey, what's the deal with the bodyguard over there? Well, do you remember, Nikki? Do you remember when, when Bill Macy, the older guy, was on the show? I don't know if you Really? Remember. And, the, you know, the, the guy, not William H. Macy, Bill oh. Macy, who played the father on Maud. Yes, what I a, do. Hold do you on. remember yes. what he said to you? Well, time out. Let my brain fall into the net under the trapeze. 
<laughs> from the fucking yes. chasm from William H. Macy to Bill Macy. How about our stand-ins? Let them have a no, little... No, I know. Our island of... Oh, creepy people. It was the but, island but, of Dr. Moreau. Fucking... Um, it was all so bizarre. Norm talk, finally. Uh, no, really. People like, you know... tweeting requests. Monday, Monday at the table read, this guy, Bill Macy, older guy, uh, and Nikki walks up very polite and goes, hi, I'm Nikki Cox. And he goes, Nikki Cox, I'm Bill Pussy. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. And everybody went, holy shit. And, he's, and the next day he's like, oh my God, am I going to get a fire? And didn't he send you flowers or something? It's something bizarre. And, he, like, and, and, then, he, and, then, he, and then it was like sick. Right. Yeah. And he didn't come in for a couple. It, it was Orchids. all too bizarre. Uh, yeah. And I also remember a really lengthy wine tasting that we had to go through yeah. for our Christmas yeah, present yeah, one year. And yeah. I, I don't remember whose idea that was, but someone said, hey, as a cast, let's give out wine. But in lieu of like just like choosing a nice bottle, let's all try every wine they make <laughs> to see what's right. No, but you, you're right about the stand-ins, too. They were extra, extra <laughs> creepy. <laughs> I, I, I'm <laughs> sorry to remember that. Extra <laughs> creepy I motherfuckers. I told you. I told you. <laughs> Thank you. But I've been looking for, yeah, for, like, for, for, uh, for validation from that. I've been trying to explain this to him. Like for, they were all in a band that they begged you to come see. And like, <laughs> they, yeah, I remember. <laughs> Really brutal. I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I'll come check it out. You like the blues? No, no, it was that one guy. It was the one man band. It was Norm standing. Yeah, that's and I remember his guy. name. Because I think it was Brett, and the name Brett? of his band was Where's Brett? Because because I would always walk around and he put some fuck where Brett. He put his foot. No, so no, that's his cover band. No, my, okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Riders on the Storm. He, he, would, he would fucking yeah. paper the set with his flyers. Yeah, he would and it, I'd be like, where's Brett? And I'd be, I would just say to whoever was near, way too fucking close. I don't care. My, Wherever my, he is, too fucking close. One of my favorite things that happened was, oh my God. you know, we were in the middle of the biggest hits on the planet. We, we were on the Warner Brothers lot. So right next to us was Drew Carey. Uh, literally, um, ER. West Wing, <laughs> ER, Friends, all within walking distance. I was, I mean, sh they were shooting a perfect storm. Okay, here I am. Too bad. Okay, so so now uh, I don't know if you know. Hey, I already. Hold on, before you go yeah, on. And, 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 and the mayor. Hold, of hold on, Nikki Cox. There, I got one question. Yeah. Where's Brett? <laughs> Way too close Where, to me. Where's Brett? Where's uh, Brett? Uh, Where's Brett? Pronounce the H. So the, so so a tour, me and Norm are throwing a football around. A tour goes by, and they're going. That's West Wing. That's Friends. <laughs> The woman, me and Norm were literally right in front of the tour thing, and the woman goes, and this is where they shoot the Norm show starring Nikki Cox. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what they said. That's horrible. And Norm was like, hey, God. No. And how I just like the fact that I played a dirty whore for the only reason that so Norm could say dirty whore every episode and right. have a reason to. It made me so happy. Well, that was, the, 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 yeah, he had a stand-up bit that had a wiener dog in it, so and they, so they gave a him wiener a wiener dog. dog where he could say wiener dog. Which was <laughs> disgusting. Remember holding that thing? How your hands would smell? It would make like that. Like, I sound when you pick it up. Well, it I want to go back, go back to these stand-ins. Well, they would act they out. Band. <laughs> they, and also, they would, they would come they would to the act. basketball court with us. My guy was like made of wrought iron, and he was just yes. I, he always wore like bad like dress loafers and slacks, no matter what he was doing. So we, we played in a basketball game. It didn't make and, any sense, right? He would get extra rough with the rebounds, like he couldn't play. And he would elbow, but <laughs> like that basketball court, like George Clooney would get in the game. The mayor of Warner Brothers. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was so bizarre. This guy would be like, ah, ah. And oh, then if you would DJ sneak Brown. if you would sneak into the stage when we weren't acting, like if they were just whatever. Yeah. We we were done, the stand ins would stay and they would do our scenes. Right, right. And that would that, oh, that's just no. hard. That's just very very wacky group. It just, it was just odd. Well, and, and, would always and, and it would hurt your heart a little. <laughs> yeah, a lot. And, and it would hurt it would make you want to cry. Norm would always explain how he's pissed off because we worked in a social work office. Every fucking extra is just some homeless person. Like, Spade works at a model agency on his fucking show. The extras all we like, act, we <laughs> actually had He was all mad at Spade. We, Spade works at a fucking modeling agency. We actually had an extra called Bugbeard. <laughs> <laughs> You remember Bugbeard? <laughs> we had yeah, because well, yeah, these guys, we'd eat lunch with them. And they, were, you know. they were our friends. By the way, they were, you, better, they were different, better than our stand. We're better than Brett. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell who the drunks are at the table and their ninth cups of coffee, water, and Coca-Cola? <laughs> Barty and I are drinking like we just fucking midway through a marathon. I know. It's fucking man. hot coffee. I'm sweating. Uh, I don't know I said that like Colin. <laughs> I'm sweating like I have hot beverages. Like a, like there's a cat on a hot tin collin. It's fucking perfect. Well, it's because I don't give a care. Wow. I'll tell you that right now. I'll I'm so that. pleased you that you that remember right that. Take that right under the arches. Thank you. Why do you ask Bugbeard? That's Bugbeard about it. That's Bugbeard. How many insects legs is that? And, and did well, they make, the did they the make guy... you dress up like a... Like a 
Pokemon person. They always had us like in costumes and I, like I like, be, whack, uh, like wacky hats and shit. Yeah, and a poor Mac. The other thing, poor Max. Max, right? Do you remember by the end of the by the end of the run? I was there for a few years. I, I, I don't drive. Norm didn't drive. Max uh, Wright was not driving. You know, he got into an accident. Right, right, right. He was loaded. <laughs> we all he was in, 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 in a horrible oh. accident, and, and we all thought that he was the the, the casualty. What a we thought he, it was a because it was on the news. We thought he was dead. And we he thought never it was him. Us. And but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out he'd fallen asleep and, and, and you know, Look, run into an accident that had already happened. On the 5 at 8 a.m., he just passed out. Look, seatbelts, it's and not it that we don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy, this guy, the show gets canceled two days, two days before I'm on the Stern Show for the first time. This guy I'm on a show with, Max Wright, there's a picture of him in the National Enquirer smoking crack and jerking <laughs> off a black midget. And they, no. they, they ran the picture. Was yeah. it Beetlejuice? <laughs> See, that's what I would say. Literally. And so the first thing Howard said no, was, what's with that guy you're on the show with? I said, I don't know. He seemed all right to me. By the end of the show. <laughs> he was jerking Lord, off Lord. <laughs> There were a lot. There were there were a lot of little people on the show too. Yeah. Remember how many midgets? Hey, we had? Yeah, that midget yeah, shit. It, it was the more I think about it, the more yes. the more bizarre the whole thing becomes. <laughs> but by the end of the show, none of us drove to work. <laughs> by the end of the show, none of us. I had my bodyguard because yeah, it, like, yeah. and everyone was drunk and like we all had problems. Like we were just like we were this land of misfit toys, and no I one wanted know. to watch our Canadian. show. Yeah, yeah, and there yeah. we were in the middle of the superstars, and we're just like this unloved redheaded. That was kid. extraordinary. At it least you guys middle. are interesting. It, it, it He's was, an addict. You know, you have a but stalker. We, but we, <laughs> Norm's like, I can't drive. I'm from Alberta. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm from Regina. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? You know, pull up in a Buick. That's fucking perfect. Tell the story about the guy standing to act like a kid standing. Oh, Jesus, you'll remember this. You'll, yeah, this. yeah, you'll remember. Uh, you had, you like had to kid. act like Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you were Santa Claus. I was Santa. Yeah, I got and shot. There, and there was a guy, and there, there, there were uh, kids, yeah. And Who's going to be there, Santa? Uh, there were, there were, the guy with I the fat I, mother? I, I, was, I was either, and I don't know if I was an elf or if I was Mrs. Claus. Yeah, and, you were an elf. Was I an elf? You were an elf. I was, dirty, I, dirty I, elf. I, I, a whore, I was a whore, an elf whore. You were a whore elf. Where's that elf? Again. <laughs> and uh, they couldn't bring the kids in for rehearsals, so they used. So they used. That's hold on, right. they can't. So they why can't they bring out, the kids in well, so for used, the listeners? First, you can't let. They don't want to have children actors. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of rights. Then they can only work nine. Rule. You can only they work nine hours. They have schooling yeah, yeah, yeah. and oh, right. So they made the adults. So they made the our adult stand-ins play the, the kids', kids parts. Yeah, I remember. But they all made this like this big decision that they would not. They didn't do it in rehearsal. They only yeah. did it for the uh, for the, the big run through like for the Gleason. network. Right. So they all come out. They're all gonna re- they're gonna show. <laughs> they're up. Yeah. They're, they're saving it. They're saving it for the big show. Save the gold. Exactly. <laughs> the and elf so, is a bum. Exactly. Bugbeard's a bum. <laughs> And yeah, so, they wouldn't rehearse. <laughs> and so they Gleason. all came out. The health is a bum. Yes. <laughs> and so all of our stand-ins decided Ooh. at to play children. They wanted oh, to get into it. And so they all came ever. out. That's they right. all came out on their knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was one. And there was one man Which who was. Is a, how they got the job. There was a, <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say anything, but that's how I got the job. <laughs> when the saints come rushing <laughs> <one way. laughs> And and I think and away we go. And it was I think it was Max's stand, and it was an older man who who came up to you, and he he was on his knees, and he went, "He said I can't even do it." It was an old old man. What did he say? (laughs) No, you have to do it now. It's the twenty. This murder is wrong. He was like an eighty-year-old man, and he's standing. All right. He's he 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 crawl. He goes on his knees up to you, and you're trying not to laugh. I'm trying. Yeah, like, yeah. We're all make, trying not to make eye contact because we know we're all going to just lose our shit. Wait, he walks out on his knees? They all did because they're playing kids, but they didn't do it in rehearsal, so we weren't prepared that they were going to really represent children <laughs> by being short on their knees. And so the one guy, he's, and he's an older gentleman, an older actor. Yeah, he's an older he guy. He's Max's stand-in, and he, and he, oh, and he, and he crawls up t- t- to you, Artie, and he goes, <laughs> and, he, and you have to go, hey, little boy. <laughs> How, how how have you been this year? Have you been a good little boy? <laughs> and this actor takes it upon himself year old. Yeah. to also do a, a childlike voice. And he went, hey, Sam, I want a blue bunny. And I also want a tricycle. 
and we all just like, stopped fucking dead in our truck. Like, that, like, fucking, he did, like, his biggest baby voice he could to represent, look, I'm a child, and I'm, and I, and I'm, in, I'm asking oh, Santa for my God, wish. Yeah. And he kind of, like, sat on your lap a little, and it was just fucking awesome. Awful. We yeah. all we all want to wish death <laughs> upon ourselves and, yeah, and him. Yeah, yeah. It was a hideous well, that was experience. Awkward moments. That was that's not what, okay. It was that's not what okay. Max rear ended the car in front yeah, of him. He, he, yes. <laughs> he drove he Max to drink and drive. And then he went and saw the where's Brett. Going on with that life. <laughs> <laughs> that I show. never felt more normal in my life than around that guy. That, uh, that whole show, the more I think about it. Was but he was such a dumb... He did, like, Ibsen plays in the park. He was, so he was Those brilliant. sitcoms were supposed to look like graffiti on a bathroom wall. To him. That's what I... Absolutely. <laughs> Written in crayon. But he, but he took them terribly country. seriously. This is the father from ALF for the, the listeners. The father from and ALF. He, but he, uh, he was also famously a, a stage got actor. fired from ALF or, or got suspended from ALF because uh, he got caught all coked up beating up the, uh, the puppet. I guess there's, I didn't know there's this. Like this brilliant guy, and yeah. every week the puppet gets over on him. Oh, you're bald, buddy. And like, oh, and he has to, like, you know, he gets outwitted by the puppet. Uh, and meanwhile. he was smoking and shooting cocaine, and he right. and he supposedly they caught him beating the fuck out of Alf, the puppet, in the prop room, and they had to be <laughs> he had to be restrained. They sent him to the psych ward. <laughs> he was off the show for like three months. <laughs> What's a psych ward like? Walk us. That's I a mean, riot. Uh, I, I I bet I've, been, I've been to four of them now, and I four. just like uh, we're just like just three. You got to go here. mandatory seventy two hours ago. <laughs> well, I played Scrabble in a psych ward. I've told this story before, like briefly, but it's uh, I, I played Scrabble. It was an eighty pound. There were three people in a Scrabble game. An eighty pound woman who was like a meth head, and this four hundred pound guy who was on methadone and Thorazine. And I got his. Um, he hadn't gotten his, his medication yet. So I'm like keeping score, which means it's already a horrible Scrabble game. <laughs> I was just working for, so, so the guy went third, who we she were all just, scared she of. She just keeps saying five, five, yeah. five. Well, when the guy went, when the big guy went that we were all sort of scared of, there's an open G. And he just puts an M and an R next to the G. It's a GMR. And I was like, uh, you know, who cares? I was like, let's add it up. Great word. You know, what are you know. The, the meth head woman starts going, that's not a word. Like, she wants to argue with the guy. And I'm, I feel, I'm like going, really? Is this your cause in life? Like, we're in a psych ward playing fucking Scrabble. It's over, honey. <laughs> right now in our world that we've created, GMR is a word. So, so she starts fighting yes. with the guy and, the guy, and the guy claimed it was an abbreviation, which you can't use. And I just said, well, let's just add it up. It's an abbreviation. And the woman said, what's an abbreviation for? Like, really mad. And the guy said, it's the abbreviation for game room. <laughs> And I said, and maybe it is, you know? <laughs> and fucking guards had to come over and break the two up. Like, I was in the middle of this crazy Scrabble argument in who a psych ward. Who won the game? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would give it to him, but it got broken up <laughs> before the third move. Another guy thought I was Jimmy Kimmel, swore I was Jimmy Kimmel, was telling everybody in the floor I was a Jimmy brother? Kimmel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. that's Jimmy Kimmel, man. That's what he kept saying. Oh, and he was a huge guy. Got, Jimmy not? Kimmel, man. <laughs> <laughs> and after correcting him three times, I just let him think it. Oh, it's better to Yeah, what the better. fuck? I was like, I don't care. Oh, that's Bob Sugars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My shower wasn't working, and I was creeped out by it, so they took me to a special shower, like in the side, like where the employees shower sometimes. That's and, 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 and this guy saw it and goes, uh, We goes, have a special shower. Jimmy, Jimmy's in the fucking celebrity shower. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel ain't showering with us, motherfucker. You know where it's at, Jimmy. You go shower. <laughs> you you go shower, shower where the rich motherfucker shower. Don't shower with us. Don't get mad at him. I like how you had your imaginary back. <laughs> like, don't yeah. fuck with Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, no, that's what he, he, he was I like, love this guy. Like, yeah. I want to meet this guy. Now, well, then he, he made me put my hand on the Koran. Uh, he goes, come All right, maybe goes, I don't need to meet him right yeah, away. He goes, he goes, let me finish. Come in my yeah. room. Come in my you room. You will eventually. And um, he goes, put, put, put your hand on the Bible. And I put my hand on the Bible. He goes, now close your eyes and pray with me for 30 seconds. So I close my eyes. And for 30 seconds, he just prays. And then he goes, I'll see you in heaven, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you say, close your eyes and pray with me. And then you close your eyes and 15 seconds in, you hear him unzip his pants. <laughs> Believe Ooh. me, I had one eye open. <laughs> and he had a brown one. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, I've turned into Jim Norton. <laughs> that was such a Norton wow. one-liner. No, yeah. God damn, he's funny. Yes, he is. Quick as hell, that little dead little Jimmy. <laughs> so, so how do you go from Norm, I guess, you know, what's the short form of getting uh, Howard Stern? Well, I'd been on uh, the show a couple times with Norm to promote stuff. And I told, the first time I went on Howard with Norm, uh, <laughs> 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 1972 group. <laughs> uh, 
Christ. I told I tell everybody that I might go on the Stern show because I'm going in with Norm and Norm said, "Hey man, I you know I'll call you into the show." And so <laughs> that he, bag he, shit. he calls me in and uh, and I'm sitting down and Gary's putting the headsets on me. And Norm, as I'm sitting down, says to Howard on the air, he goes, hey, Howard, you're like Artie. You got kicked off of Mad TV because of cocaine. <laughs> it just totally threw me. And Howard's eyes darted to me, and I told a story about getting arrested for coke, and I was in L.A. County for a week and everything, and Howard loved it. So he said, well, come back next time with Norm. So I went in there like three times to promote the show with him, and I just always told stories that he liked. So it's just funny. It was all timing. Our show got canceled. I moved back here. And Jackie left the show like two months before that happened. So they were having, they were having guys sit in, the, <laughs> sit in the chair. And when I sat in the chair, he already knew me. And after a few months, I got the gig. What so, other guys sat in the chair? Uh, I remember this process. They had uh, everybody was good. Yeah, they had, uh, Rogan sat in a few times. Not everybody necessarily wanted the job, which helped. But I because uh, that other does show, help. But but, uh, but like Chappelle was doing it, and there was no way Chappelle was going to do because you had to be willing to do those hours. I got to get up early <laughs> in the morning. Howard. Man, I'm doing that shit. <laughs> Man. So I, uh, I cracked the code of Dave Chappelle stand up every <laughs> once in a while for no reason. One of my punchlines come right. out in a white voice. <laughs> Right, he does. It that. don't make any sense at all. There's a crack dealing, baby. Well, what would you like? I just love how, I, just, I just love how like fifty black comedians have just ripped that off from Richard Pryor, and no one like no one just points it out. Like Richard oh, Pryor do. did the white voice. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he do that white voice? That exactly. No, Romeo <laughs> Cornell's doing it. <laughs> I think I bring it back to a sports show. Him? Oh yeah. Well, I, I I believe Richard Pryor's last TV appearance of all time was the Norm Show. And then, I, then I'm Max almost, I'm rear-ended positive. him on the 405. He, <laughs> he was in a hover-round. <laughs> but bang. do you remember what his gal was saying to him? I mean, yeah, like, like like there was a girl with him, a woman and who she said... like, get massage him, you're going to have a martini and a... And we'll a, get you a martini and a, and a woman. And a when you get home, baby. Yeah, if you can and, get through these lines. He was yeah. like this, Jay. And, and then DePaulo had to follow him. They brought him out. They brought him out. And we're like, he's never going to get through this. Like, he, And they had a, and it had to be a physical thing that they had a stuntman for. And he just basically yeah, sat there. They had a fight and, scene for him. Yeah. <laughs> they had, they had, they had, they had uh, Norm and him like punching each other. I, I get, there's no way he could have done another TV appearance after that. Because I, I didn't it might so. be his last time ever on television. I think he was on CSI Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I used the other name. Yeah. <laughs> I was Bojangles, gonna, Artie <laughs> I wasn't going to color it in. Batman Brothers. <laughs> I just le- left it in an ellipses for you. I alley-ooped that shit. Tyson Chandler. <laughs> bam, bam. bam. Yeah. Yeah, let me see his list here. Uh, let's see. John Ho. I'm trying to figure out what they're running here. Like John Ho. Who was the other guy? It was Kissinger. Henry Kissinger. Artie Lang. <laughs> oh, man. They have the president's here. No, I don't know. Like thank you, fuck you, what, who? It's like, a, it's on it's on cool. YouTube. It's the funniest thing ever. We played it on the show, and just to hear Caruso in that crazy over dramatic voice, like, Looks like they're Artie. gambling. And can you do him? You've ribbon <laughs> got taken for a ride. <laughs> what? Well, good fool. And then there's a fan boat. <laughs> I know the Who song. <laughs> the who song kicks in. I say on stage, I go, that's White Heaven. A right. detective and the who. Yeah. I go, there's no black equivalent of that. That'd be like if Morgan Freeman <laughs> solved a crime and they immediately cut to a car wash and earth, wind, and fire. Like, <laughs> like good, <laughs> good old dandy. I guess that's what happens when the driven get taken for a ride. <laughs> oh, the hell. <laughs> but I You'd be like, shit! I watched that in a minute. <laughs> but it's fucking, but, but yeah, I, it's so like, like you're right. That it's, I guess, won't be fooled again when he does the loud. It's literally the sound of Pete Townsend going to the bank to cash a check. Like, yeah. Wow! <laughs> Billions of dollars. Everything you lost Three in gambling. Three CSIs goes yeah, the other way. Yeah. <laughs> the bookies have to give it back. I, the amount of money he's making. Uh, so you and Howard hit it off. Yeah, and I was on there, you know. Those hours are murder, right? Well, uh, every one of my friends called me. I'm going, Art, congratulations. I give you two weeks. <laughs> oh, really? But at the time, I was in a healthy space, uh, as healthy as I could be. And I lasted over eight and a half years doing that full time. But the last couple were, I gave myself a road schedule that nobody could could basically do without without some sort of enhancement on some level. I I, I got addicted to the money. You know, you get offered, you know, this from stand-up. You get offered fucking more money than your old man made in a year yeah. to go to St. Louis, and then you got to come back 
The problem was I had to go from having like a paper route during the week in the morning to being totally nocturnal. And then I, and if I do those three weekends in a row, you Phoenix, Detroit, St. Louis, then you're, I was, I don't know which way I was going, coming and fucking leaving. I was just, you know, where hotels, out. literally that cliche of forgetting where you are on stage. Yeah. And uh, I started taking opiates to deal with it. And um, Which ones? Well, I started with Vicodin and, you know, painkillers and shit. And then I went to, like, codeine. And then I uh, I, I, I got uh, this guy at a, at, a, at a club. I told him I need 100 Vicodin. Like one of these comedy club managers just do anything to get you on stage. And I was yeah. like, going through withdrawals. So he goes, what do you need? I go, get me, like, 100 Vicodin if you can. Just take it out of my check. And he goes, How many are you taking a day? And I said, sometimes I take, like, 30 a day. And he goes, he goes, you know what you should do? You should do heroin. It's better for your liver. That's what he actually said to me. <laughs> I said, thank you, doctor. So he got he, he got me a couple of dime bags of heroin, oh and I went back. <laughs> I went back. <laughs> exactly. Jesus you don't have to be not too far off. So I uh, I went back to the I went back to like <laughs> I went back to the Hawthorne Suites, and uh, I, I I did a couple of fucking lines of heroin. And man, when I Was my, that the first time you did it. Uh, I had done it in the nineties coming down from Coke once in an after hours club, but I couldn't count that because I Coke was my thing for a while, but now I was less social. Now I was just becoming, I like to call it depression without genius. <laughs> I was sitting in a room alone, but I couldn't write like Edgar Allan Poe. It's like a like, depressed genius without the genius. <laughs> right, exactly. Just the depression. So, uh, but when I did those two lines, I know my personality, I, my head at the pillow. I said out loud, I'm in trouble. It was fucking just euphoria. Really? I said, I'm in trouble. And I chased it. You did it. two lines of heroin. Yeah. And then said out line, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. And I wow. fucking, I chased it for six years. It became a, I came a full, became a full-time job. Getting it, getting the money, trying to hide money that you're going to use to get it. Not getting arrested or fucking killed when you get it. Uh, finding a place to do it. And then completely isolating. Because it's not like Coke or whatever where it's a, it's a social drug. Go outside and have a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You just want to fucking, it's like you're by yourself. You can smoke if you want. Uh, I, you know, that's the thing with drugs that people don't understand. It's only fun for like the first 16 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only that last month and a then half. Then you realize, yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. isn't so much fun yeah. anymore. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, Howard, for some reason, really fucking has a hard on for me. Hates Why? Me. What happened? Nothing ever. That's the thing that makes it confounding to me. No. I don't know. It's like really? some YouTube. Like I, I know things about Jay Moore that'll ruin his career, Robin. That's he says that. Yeah, Dolly, just leave it closed because it'll make too much noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen to him. I don't when, know. Uh, I, I don't know. You know what happened? I was at the MTV Awards and they were there. Yeah. And it's Howard was at the MTV Awards. Well, like, Gary always tells that story on the air. And I was yeah, like yeah. in outside the circle, kind of looking in, like hoping Gary will look up and go, "Hey, Jay Moore, like have a seat." Right. Well, I always said to Gary about that show. I said, "Well, it sounds like he was being very respectful. Like, you know, like he was like yeah. he's a fan, and you know." Yeah. Hopefully we'll make eye contact and you'll call me over. Right, I was like right, a, right. a fat kid outside the bakery, like, please. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, and I remember him speaking. I remember listening to his show and him going, what am I, what am I talking about Jay Moore about? Who, who cares? <laughs> who cares? But that's almost like getting insulted by Rickles when Howard says that. Like, I can remember the first time I, like, 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 like there was a honeymoon period on the air where Howard never fucked with me because he was giving me time. He was, everything was great. Artie's great, blah, blah, blah. And then that first day where you get fucked with, it's like, okay, now I'm really in the crew a little yeah. bit, you know. But, uh no, I mean, I never really heard anything. It never there bothered about me. It, it always co just confused me because I never, and nothing ever went the other way. Yeah, well, it makes you think. That I know somebody, things about Jay Moore that'll ruin his career. But it makes you think somebody out there is talking about you to him because, you know, and then that, that makes you, that would aggravate the fuck out of me because you're talking about a powerful guy. <laughs> she asked me, like, does he know? I'll go, I don't know anything that could hurt my career. <laughs> I hate when people say that about me too because I could forget, I could have forgotten shit. I'm like, what happened? Like, what, what did I do? You know? Someone once told me that, um, you know, Darren Aronofsky, the guy who directed um, Pie and, a pie and uh, Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. Like, I'm a big fan of his. He, uh, he was doing The Wrestler, and I, um, I auditioned for it. I went to three, three callbacks, and there was a small part of, like, a promoter. But I really wanted to kind of work with the guy just to see what it was like. Of course. Um, and, uh, and at the last second, he told me I had it, and then he called me and said, I don't have it. I didn't have the part. So I told the story on the air, and my buddy who I was on Mad TV with this kid, David Herman, real talented kid, he goes, um, uh, a friend of mine seems to remember being in L.A. back in 95, and you got into a fight with Darren Aronofsky at a bar, and you kept calling him a film school fag, and you kept smacking him on the head like Benny Hill or something. 
I said, get out of here. He goes, maybe he's just getting back at you because that happens in show business. Like he wanted to let you think he had the part and then just took it out from you. I said, I don't. And then Aronofsky came on the Stern show and goes, I guarantee your friend's fucking with you because I would remember that. Oh, that's awesome. So, so, but the fact that I, well, that's what I mean. But, but the fact that I don't, like it could have been true. <laughs> I don't recall doing that. Is uh, that scary as hell? You know, or being in a blackout on stage. You wake up and you know wherever in in Denver at a hotel, and you realize the night before you spoke publicly, and you don't remember what the fuck you said. Like yeah, you got paid to speak publicly. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you just bang out the meetings and just stay in contact I with do people that as and- much as I can. As I, I and. Uh, you know, uh, thank God for what thank God for what we do for a living. You yeah. know, it's like it is. It is honestly that cliche is true. Like stand up or or, or you know just doing anything in comedy. It, it is a rush. It is a fucking. It's. I mean, if I if I were, I got buddies of mine I grew up with to work at gas stations, and they still get high like we did when we were nineteen, and. Sometimes, like, I never say this out loud, but part of me is like, dude, keep getting high. Because that might, if that's all you got to look forward to. Yeah, sniff paint. Yeah, do whatever. Whatever's going to keep you alive. We're going down to the shore. We bought some Coke, Artie. Right. We're going to Sandy Hook. The water's brown. It's like 1984 still. (laughs) You know? We're going uh, to Sandy Hook. It's the first exit with a beach. <laughs> fucking with, degenerate beach. What a half a gallon bottle of Papua vodka. Plastic bottle. Come, Chaka. Uh, yeah, it is amazing too. Like, the, there's like a sliding scale. Like when we started, we probably started around. I started like eighty. Well, you're a little younger than me, yeah. So really, yeah, forty two. Yeah. I'm forty. I'm forty five. Just turned forty five. All right. Yeah. So, but I, the seems, first time I ever tried it was eighty seven. All right. So same time we started. Yeah. It seems like the sliding scale of like guys that use. And guys that don't, it was like, this guy doesn't do anything. He's like, like what's with this guy? And now it just now seems like different. everyone yeah. sort of tapped out. And like, and now it's, I'm sure guys like, I know I've become a little bit of one. I'm sure you must be like tenfold what I am. Like somehow I'm the oracle. Like I'm the guy people call, because I wrote about panic attacks. Uh, no. You wrote God. about addiction. Yeah, yeah, So people yeah. call like, well, Artie knows. He know, And you do know. No, right. And, and then and you become. It's then you, pressure. Then the weird thing is when you meet young kids that use, you're like, yeah. oh my God, you don't even realize you're just going to quit in 10 years anyway. No, I know. You want to beg them. Like it's not wor- like it's not going to help you. You're not going to be. But you're also kind of jealous. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're jealous <laughs> of youth. That's the other, I, 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 I find I'm out. I'm like, you know, God, you're fucking really at 25. Jesus Christ. Oh, let's sniff paint and go to Sandy yeah, Hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get a lot of that with, with younger comics who are like, um, they say they want to be like you. And I'm like, really, God, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you feel like you, gotta, you need some therapy there. So man. you're on tour. I, I saw you doing part of the antisocial tour. I do that, which is Jimmy a great Norton, gig. Jimmy Norton, sober. Tell. David Tell, sober. doesn't drink anymore. Doesn't drink, he's done, yeah. I believe sober. I don't, yeah, know, no, I don't think there's meetings or anything, but he's Sober out. is a judge. He's not a meetings guy, I don't You, think. sober. Yeah. Like, th- th- just those three alone. I don't know what Bill Burr does with his life. I don't, th- I don't know. But I don't think Billy he's an addict yeah, at all. Yeah, no, no, he's just, not at all. He's not a, he's just a Boston person. He doesn't have that person. problem. He just and the Apollo sometimes comes, and the Apollo's not a party at all, you know. So his, his vice is moderation. His vice is anger. Fuck. No, he didn't know exactly. I can't, oh. I, and I can't understand that someone could be that funny and that much of like an, uh, a non compromising mm-hmm. artist and not, and not have addiction problems. I get like, because he he really. Uh, but again, yeah, the jealousy of that is fucking brutal. I, I, I like really, you can stop. You can fucking. How long have you known Nick? I've known Nick. Uh, almost 20 years. Oh, really? I met him when I, I first went out to L.A. in 95 to do Mad TV, and I met him at the Laugh Factory. Like, that's, that's so, like, 17 years or something like that? Uh, Nick and Artie's on DirecTV, uh, on the Audience Network, and also on Sirius XM, on either Channel 92 or 94. I think it's Somewhere 94. in the 90s. <laughs> it's 92. Oh, you checked it's 92? XM2. Davey oh, Hammer. Okay. Yeah. Look at your alias all covered in everything. <laughs> uh, complete my at complete my song at Artie Quitter. Yeah, so th- those antisocial gigs, man, what a fucking gig! A, a Talon Norton approached me at the comedy show last year and I said, "I know you're trying to ease back into it. Everybody does 20 minutes. The pay's really good. You know, we do like 2,000 to 3,000 seat Indian casinos. We've done like five of them, and but but I do my own stuff too. I got a new hour of shit from." Last couple of years of nuttiness, and uh, and then sometimes me and Nick go out. So stand up, I'm pretty busy. So you and Nick doing a sports show together was just an obvious, easy thing that you guys had. In yeah, your head it fell into time. my lap. I was trying to figure out what to do. Like you know, Howard and I had officially part of ways, and it was in a real amicable way. He's like, "Look, man, the schedule is crazy. It, it's out of nothing." 
I love you. He's like, you know, just, just, you got to be well, you know, and I'd support anything you did, but I don't think this is going to work here. And I agreed with him. So when that happened, I was just making some phone calls to some people. Nick had always stayed in touch with me to see if I was all right. And uh, I called him up and he goes, I literally just talked to the guys at DirecTV and they said, think about a partner because we'd love to do two comedians doing a sports show. And I called him like 10 minutes later and they, they, he called DirecTV and they were fans of Stern. They're like, we'd, we'd love it if he's really okay. So there was a trial period where we did a couple of test shows and, and they made sure I was they tell you all about your P1s, you got to hit your posts. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I was on the biggest radio show of all time for 10 years. I don't know anything about radio because right. he, he, he listened to no rules. There was no, like, yeah. we're, we're up against a hard break. I'm like, I never heard that before in my yeah, life. You're going to be out of 58, man. Yeah. <laughs> so Nick hosts it. And I just sit there and just act like a boob. You know? I like it a lot. Uh, you know, it, it's a weird phenomenon that's new, like Dan Patrick and Francesa and those guys. Uh, like, suddenly you're watching radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like this free form. There's the, like this ambiguity. Right. So you're like, watch. It's like if the Tonight Show just kept going for three hours. Yeah, exactly. And they get like, maybe there's a guest and we'll just talk. And it speaks volumes of how interesting and how funny you and Nick are <laughs> just being yourselves that anybody would just sit and watch guys talk. Yeah. Like Francesa, like, you know, there, there's a certain thing you got to pull. There's always got to be a gag or a gimmick. Sure. Francesa, I don't know how much people are watching that. But like Boomer I mean, and Carton, you're like one of the guys is Boomer Esiason. Yeah. No, I like, know. Oh, there's Boomer. And like Mike and Mike, like there has to be like this chemistry. But with you guys, you guys have superseded. And I think it's going to usher in a lot of guys right behind you. Well, uh, we've and been it's on... got to feel good on the Stern show that you were never replaced. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think, I think by that point it was like, um, because cause I'm sure it'd be, it's not about being funny. It was just about just, just the madness of my life became such a part of it. And that's hard to replace as someone as nutty as me, I think. And I think Howard's even kind of burnt out. Like, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. That chair is still empty there. If you but, could pick, knowing the Howard Stern show as much as you know the Howard Stern show, yeah. a guy you know that would be perfect as that third mic, who would you pick? Don Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Kissinger. Tiny bubbles. Uh, quick, who would be perfect for the third? It would have to be someone. It has to be a combination of someone, I, I guess, you know, it could be funny, but also someone's got a real thick skin that could take the ball-breaking part, too, because uh, – uh, and um, – and someone who's willing to be honest, I guess, about their life. If it's, Norm could do it. Uh, I, Norm would be great, but I think after a while, he, Norm would get sick of that schedule way, way quicker than I did. That's the other thing is the schedule. Like, I, you know, be willing to do that grind. Because Howard has this work ethic that's insane. It's just like... Explain just that. So, like, people don't know so that. So regimented. Really? I mean, you know, he's one of those guys, like, like some... He's a real artist and an original, but he's also... He, he has the regiment of, like, an accountant, which is a weird thing. Uh... That probably comes from his OCD. Days. Yeah, yeah, no, he's like, I gotta, I gotta be here at this time. I gotta be in bed at eight o'clock. I gotta, you know, and if if the people in my life can't deal with it, they're, they're gonna have to because uh, they can't be in my life if that's the case. Because this is how I have to live to 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 keep doing what I love doing. Um, so that that whole combination is, uh, I don't know, it, it, it'd be it'd be it'd be weird. Um, uh, I think uh, I think Jim Brewer was a guy who could definitely do <laughs> do like you know all the Jimmy. yeah you know Brewer's a guy who, and he always came on and he destroyed he could do every voice and Howard Howard loves him but um, I don't know if Jim would be totally comfortable with the honesty that shows sometimes not that he's got anything to when hide Howard but it's starts like, talking I don't think about, he'd want to deal with it you know I know exactly what you're saying Jim yeah. there's a there's a a gentleness to, and I mean this in the most positive way. Right, in the world. Yeah, There's yeah, a yeah. real sensitive beauty to Jim. There like, is. When Howard would start make fun of, uh, if Howard started to make fun of Jim wiping his dad's ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jim, that's, not, that's not gonna fly. <laughs> right. Because Jim's I, actually caring for his elderly dad. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, I know. And I, and like when that, like all that stuff kind of started happening with with that. <laughs> I I I. With, 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 I I knew my father would like it because he was just such a Stern fan. What, living with Brewer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, call, I called wasn't. Brewer, texted him again, yeah. texted him again, and then I texted him a, another time and I said, well, I, I don't know, like, are we not friends anymore? I don't know. And then about a month went by. Right. And he calls me, he goes, JJ, it's Brewer, JJ, <laughs> fucking relax. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I wipe my dad's ass. I have 
fucking human being. What the fuck? I know. And it just know. took me out. Like well, just an know. undertow that pulled me under into the real world. With my, you know, I'm in driving through Malibu like, hey, well, I guess we're not friends anymore, <laughs> dude. And then you find like, it took two weeks for that to register. Like my bullshit yeah, took yeah. two weeks to crack through caring for the elderly, no, as it not? should. Well, yeah, we all get there in this business where you find out you've been so, and that's supposed to be an addict too. You're so self-absorbed. I do that all day. You start thinking like, you know, what about my world? What the fuck's your bro? And, and Brewer does have a charm about him. He's given me some pep talks about show business that have like almost saved my bro, life. A couple bro. Of yeah, right. And you get, bro. it sounds like talking to that kid <laughs> in high school, like, oh, what are you doing, man? You're fucking show business. What, what's the problem? What are you depressed about, you know? Um, the best like, brewer uh, thing that he ever told me was him and his friends were tripping on acid running yeah. on like Jones Beach. Right. And one of his friends goes, guys, guys, guys. And he turns around and his friend was fucking in the sky. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you never heard this? He told no. it on Opie and Anthony. No. And we were like, we almost had heart attacks. You know when you laugh so hard you got to get up and get out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you're yeah. like, this isn't good for me. I'm going to have a, something's going to break. And he goes, his friend's going like, guys, guys, guys. And he goes, bro, we just fucking left him there, bro. Bro, we're like, whoa. I don't know what the kid's name was. Tommy's fucking hovering, man. He's hovering. What the fuck, man? So they run home and just leave this kid who's just like hovering. five and a half feet <laughs> off the ground. The in like a Christ pose. Off, And they're like, right. I know we're tripping, but he is off the ground. Like we wow. can see the boardwalk under his feet. That's, that's good <laughs> shit. David they go Blaine. back the next day. The kid ran into a volleyball net. And he had his hands up when he was running, oh, and it man. flipped him up and over. Oh, you're kidding me! And he me. got suspended up. <laughs> he was actually in the sky. That's a great drug story. <laughs> That's a like, great drug bro, story because bro. it turns out to be reality. <laughs> Shut up! Yeah, man. You know what? It's like that has that cra- like some guys are just like so happy that you're in show business. They don't know why you could be depressed. Like Tracy Morgan's, you know, yeah. like, like oh, we're in show business. <laughs> we're gonna get everybody pregnant. <laughs> we're gonna get everybody pregnant. <laughs> Artie Lang, I, Chris Mullen is my biological father. <laughs> I gave birth to D.L. Ellis. <laughs> yeah, like, your favorite book? Yo, Scruples is my favorite book of Scruples. Because it's illicit. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Ronzoni is my favorite pasta. <laughs> I got everybody pregnant. Antonio Cromartie got five of my kids, damn it. <laughs> That's Nick and Artie on Sirius XM. No, he's one of those guys where, like, you go, ah, I'm feeling shitty about this. Like, you a legend. <laughs> what you crazy about You legendary. <laughs> You're legendary. What you, who gives a shit? Are you show business? Yeah, I like Burger Sugar too. <laughs> Artie day, Lang is my like, uncle. Yeah. Everybody know you got a ghetto pair. One time he had an ankle thing on, and I said, "How you doing?" He goes, "I'm enjoying my sobriety." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "How long?" I, I said, "How long you been sober for?" He goes, eight days." <laughs> He had an ankle tear. I'm enjoying my sobriety. It's like the best Tracy words. That's what he said. I'm enjoying my sobriety. I said, just I don't know where you offered that up. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying my sobriety. Maya Angelou was the 11th hijacker. <laughs> I fucked up the number. <laughs> I guess it's the spirit. I think it's 20 of the 20th. 20. Uh, oh, the extra shooter, the man in the grassy you know. I'm Tom Clancy. <laughs> He's mixing American tragedies. Yeah. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln had a secretary <laughs> called Malcolm X. And Malcolm X's secretary was called JFK. <laughs> she got bananas. John Wilkes Booth. That's <laughs> <laughs> <What's that? laughs> Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> what are you talking about? He had three names. John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> and he shot John Lennon, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> John Wilkes Booth shot John Lennon in broad daylight in Dallas, Texas. Sarah Jessica Parker killed Robert Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> Sir Han, Sir Han's my biological father. Sir Han, Sir Han. He's enjoying his sobriety. He's enjoying his sobriety. <laughs> oh, he's got an ankle thing that the that police, the police like fucking cemented to him. I'm enjoying my sobriety. <laughs> it probably, you know why he said that? It probably had a mic. <laughs> He's no dummy. Yeah, yeah, that guy's dumb. That no, guy's crazy. Right. He's a fucking fox. He's a self promoter. I'm gonna take my shirt off to somebody who has sex with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did go around for like two years saying Jay Moore's my uncle. <laughs> he was in a fist fight <laughs> at the Melrose Improv <laughs> with the well, audience. Why? Yeah, bro, there could be the no audience <laughs> and him were fist fighting in yeah. the lobby of the Melrose we're, Improv. We're at the Melrose Melrose, Improv. And he's going, I miss my daughter. He just keeps yelling over. <laughs> I got a big girl with a doo-doo pamper, and I miss her. I miss H- my daughter. H-A. I miss her. 
Uh, he doesn't. And for the listeners, he doesn't have a daughter. <laughs> he has three sons, and one of them say, is like older than him. Oh right. <laughs> yes, I got my son's gonna drive me to school. I'll be right back, Jay Moore's. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. He's got a son that's older. I'm enjoying my sobriety. Enjoy I read my scruples sobriety. on the train. <laughs> I just discovered books on tape. <laughs> you like that shit. Yeah. That's up your alley. Cripple pussy, stay wet. He's a, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He, 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 go, he goes, I love me some welfare pussy. <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he said on Howard and Eric. I love me some welfare pussy. I like this charge. Why? I don't know. Why? I like it. Can't, it can't be good. I like, <laughs> I like this trip. My favorite new one, his new bit. I yeah. like that just sentences are bits. Yeah, you yeah. go, what's Tracy been doing? And the club owner goes, oh, hey, kept saying he likes discharge <laughs> and i'm like but what's the bit they're like no he just kept saying that over i like this charge that's his notes and then it just says the Paula. <laughs> <laughs> artie lang at artie lang quitter uh make sure you watch nick and artie on direct tv bro we uh apparently we're supposed to be friends yeah no absolutely and uh as, as right. it goes on, i'll take you to my home meeting <laughs> i'll let you read the traditions yeah we gotta hang more and uh, congratulations on your kid. That's great. A beautiful Moving baby boy. Forward. That's awesome. What's the name? Uh, Meredith Daniel. They, they nice. Named after Nick's dad. Well, great. Hey, and it's good to see kid. my old friend Nicky again. Hey, don't do any of that baby shit, you know. <laughs> hey, don't do any baby. baby stuff. I don't know about these babies. They run around, you know. <laughs> uh, I think That's about the babies. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, it is perfect, Norm. <laughs> That's right. Oh, real quick. Your new book. Crash and Burn will be out in the spring. But the forward written by Joe Buck. Yeah. Yeah. Which I had your back staunchly. No, dude, uh, I, uh, you know who told me that? Fred Norris uh, on the Stern Show. I walked in, he goes, Yo, by the way, Jay Moore, they quoted me. He was, uh, I said most people in comedy, I think, would. <laughs> like, but, uh, sport, I found out just how uptight sports people are, man. I said, listen, Ooh. it was HBO. He said, go at us, like, you know. Uh, I'd really like uh, it if you guys went after me. Uh, yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Like, all right. <laughs> That's how corporate yeah, gigs Jay, I, I honestly didn't know who Jason Zadegas was at the time. He was a real nice guy, but I wasn't following SNL at that time. And I didn't know who he was. And and uh, Paul Rudd is a guy I just knew from a couple of movies. You know, we're comics. There was an audience there. The first couple of lines got laughed, so I just kept going. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. But when you rewatch it, it's like people just don't know what to do. Like, you oh. ended his uh, television <laughs> career. I point the chat out Joe Cinco and Brett Favre, both on that show, said nothing. Gave him nothing. Right. I think he thought Brett Favre was going to announce he's coming back. He said shit. And Ocho Cinco is just a bad celebrity. He just sat there just being boring. Well, he headbutted his girlfriend. He's apparently a bad guy. No, now, I, now you can tell. Chicks. I think he's got a lot of things wrong. I think headbutting chicks. <laughs> That's second column. When you're an bad, NFL player. On the bad guy application. <laughs> Checkbox A. <laughs> Have you ever headbutted a woman? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Head about how? <laughs> well, you know, John Wilkes Booth, you know, gave George, George, I'm just saying, three names. <laughs> John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, Mark David Hoover. <laughs> Mark David Hinckley. <laughs> John Wilkes Booth gave George Harrison throat cancer <laughs> in a theater. <laughs> Oh, Sirhan Sirhan came right around the corner. That's on the money. <laughs> and he and he told John Bonham, "Drink this." <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Joe Buck. The the thing that ended. You'll take credit for ending it. No, but, fine. I mean, but, I, I, I got this credit. But what credit, really he, was, ended he had it. a great sense of humor about the whole fuck the whole time. He, was he like, did. What are you do? Yeah, he did. He was the nicest guy about it. We talked the next day. We never oh, not. That's great to HBO hear. HBO went nuts. HBO was like, because I've been destroying Joe. Buck. <laughs> no, he's a good guy. Joe is a good man. I will say, my th only thing about Joe Buck was his. his I'm Joe Buck. Welcome to Game One of the World Series. Yeah. If there's a grand slam to end this thing, I'll be saying it in this exact voice. <laughs> there's the fifth home run of the game by Albert Pujols. That's never done before. <laughs> Kerry Wood is committing self-immolation on the pitcher's mound. This game is brought to you by Enderman's English Muffins. Nothing says loving like something from the oven. A hawk has just landed on Buck show over his head and pecked out his eyes. Manning still on his feet. Throws. <laughs> Tyree caught. He's letting Troy Aikman and Tim McCarver get excited. Uh, I like when I like Tim McCarver can't say Williams. He goes Bernie Williams the batter. <laughs> like he's got a t Williams. Yeah, he's Bernie he's, Williams. I think it's time to pick a new guy there. The time for Ber how do they not sit one out and let Vince Scully, who's going to be dead in two years, I know it'd be, it'd be nice. Call the, like, hey, well, it's time for work. Like the Vince last, cause, Scully, cause Scully's the last guy who actually does sound in a romantic way, like poetry almost the way he does a game. That ball's he's buried the last like of the a deep, dark secret. <laughs> 
Vince Scully <laughs> killed. <laughs> Vince Scully wouldn't sit in the back of the bus. He's the, <laughs> yeah, he's the Rosa Parks of broadcasting. He's the Rosa Parks of Rosa Parks. <laughs> Rosa Parks. Vince Scully went to Rosa Parks High School. <laughs> he wouldn't sit in the back of the bus. A lot of people think it's the other way around. But Jack no. Buck said, get in the back of the bus, Vince Scully. And Jack Vince Scully Buck. said, I room service fly ball. <laughs> Jack Buck, when Jack Buck would start again, I remember like the 90 playoffs watching him and McCarvey. <laughs> uh, uh, here's Larkin, fly ball left. Bonds is there. He's got it. That's the way this one starts. Timmy will give you the lineups. <laughs> he tells McCarver to throw the fucking line. Uh, so then I will say this for uh, Joe Buck, who I have destroyed. No, nah, he's a good man. I will and say he was this. always good after that. I will not let your call of the greatest catch in Super Bowl history <laughs> taint the fact that you're a good guy. <laughs> Manning. Manning, by the way, looked like a, a, a new twink in the prison yard with the giant, with the. <laughs> That's how with, he always with the, looks. With though, the Patriots man. closing it around, grabbing his jersey, like, come over here, and he's just running. Manning, still on his feet. Throws. <laughs> Tyree. But the ball was caught. Tyree wedged it to the back of his yeah, helmet because yeah, yeah. he fell on top of Rodney Most Harrison. Most incredible play ever. 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 I mean, because you forget about the scrambling part. That's yes. Right. I mean, you know. Yeah. Manning, still on his feet. Throws. Tyree, caught. And literally, if Rodney Harrison wasn't laying under literally him, la it would have hit the ground. And also one of the best defensive backs like ever, by the way. Rodney Harris, yeah. He calls and, it like uh, it is, too, on that show. I no, think. you're right. He doesn't have the same excitement as the Bobby Thompson guy. <laughs> the Giants win the bed! Pales in comparison. Uh, so he wrote the forward to he wrote the forward crash to crash and burn. burn. Be out in the spring. All right, everybody. Buy everything uh, Artie Lang related. He's well. I'm looking at him in his eye. I never knew you really do have beautifully twinkly blue eyes. <laughs> They're greenish sometimes, blue. Yeah. You could have went with it. <laughs> Listen, Jay, I don't want to say, but sure, yeah. You know, Colin Quinn. <laughs> yeah, CQ is my uncle. I love Quinn. I love Quinn loves discharge. Don't be like, fuck this. I'm not coming to the run through. <laughs> He's a silver fox. Nor Norm McDonald drowned Brian Jones. <laughs> That's why they got Mick Taylor, goddammit. <laughs> Norm said, Brian, you got to go swimming with all your clothes on. <laughs> and gave him an extra bowl of heroin. Said, smoke this and go for a swim, God damn it. I'm it. enjoying myself. Enjoying my sobriety. Oh, I, I've had so much fun. This was fun, brother. This was as fun as if, it gets. If it gets rough tonight, just look at the Paolo and go, you're no Jay Moore. <laughs> and he'll go crazy. Well, you got to come on in the next couple weeks. I'd love to. Uh, I'm here for the next two weeks, and we'll just do it, and you'll text me details. Yeah. Text me deets. I will. You got yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Artie Lang killed Rosa downtown. Parks. <laughs> All right, love you, buddy. It's uh, more Thanks, stories. Jay. Put your Nikki, name on it. Much love. Thing. Peace. Yo, everybody get pregnant now.